Hi, it's Dwyer. June the 7th, 2018. Let's talk Jeff Horn against Terrence Crawford. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, my own belief is that Jeff Horn is a fastball pitcher. Let's mix sports up for a little bit. He has a great right hand. He doesn't have to set his feet to throw it. Unlike many guys with excellent punches, he likes a little bit of chaos. In other words, he wants things moving. He wants an opponent doing things. He wants action before he drops that right hand. In my favorites folder here, I've put a video here on YouTube of some of Jeff Horn's more noteworthy knockouts. You'll notice on the video, there isn't even the Manny Pacquiao film. I believe these fights are more telling because here you see how Jeff Horn in the middle of chaos always seems to know how to land that right hand on an opponent's temple. What you'll also notice too is when the guys hit the canvas, folks, they're badly hurt, they're done. I don't think people understand how hard Jeff Horn's right hand is. Now by contrast, Terrence Crawford is very different. He's very different. I consider Terrence Crawford to be a deconstructionist, right? In other words, a technician. Now, let's talk about the difference between a fastball pitcher and a technician. And what I'm going to do is to talk about a fight that's here on YouTube, a fight that I've already done a video on, Tony Bellew versus David Hay. Let me just say this. You look at David Hay, who I picked in the fight and who I still believe is more talented than Tony. But it's clear that David Hay's Achilles injury, he won't say it, is much worse than anyone imagined. <clears throat> so Hay is on his front foot against Tony, who's technical. But you'll notice that after they engage, and that's important, right? Because there's actually a moment there. After they engage, where David Hay backs away from an engagement and his defense is missing. In other words, I believe his Achilles is so bad that David Hay on his front foot's okay, but on his back foot, he's uncoordinated. Now, I believe a fastball pitcher, a guy with a great punch, it could be a straight right hand, it could be a left hook, whatever it is. A fastball pitcher is just looking for openings. They feel that you can know the fastball is coming and not be able to hit it, right? Not be able to deal with it. So a fastball pitcher might not even notice the pattern of David Hay backing away and his defense dropping, right? Fastball pitchers, again, they're looking for openings, not patterns. <clears throat> this is where the technicians enter the fray. Tony Bellew is fighting David Hay and he's looking for exactly that moment. Not only that, Tony Bellew is trying to cause that moment. So Tony Bellew is setting stuff up where they come in and mix it up a little bit. Tony's not even interested in the mix-up, in my opinion. He's waiting for the moment where David Hayes starts to back up and his defense falls apart. Let's say at that moment, when a guy has a hole in his game, you know, he, he's vulnerable. Let's just pretend he turns the color blue, right? 
Tony Bellew is setting it up so David Hay will turn blue. So there'll be a window of opportunity that Bellew will be able to try things. So, as I pointed out in an earlier video, the last round of the fight, Tony actually has an exchange with David. David then backs up. Tony tries a left hook. Right? Wrong angle. David's able to move away from it. Doesn't get hurt. David's prepared for that. So Tony then, to get David Hay back in, gets up on his toes for the first time in the round. Starts dancing backwards. Hay comes in on cue. Then as Hay backs away, Tony Bellew throws a combination again. Another left hook, only this time at a different angle. He understands Hay's moving this way. He catches Hay flush. Hay falls face down on the canvas. Now what I've noticed in Terrence Crawford fights is that Terrence Crawford has figured out an opponent before he enters the ring. This guy's one of the most prepared fighters in boxing. You'll notice from the opening bell, he's not even, put it this way, the first time a guy's blue lights up. You know, I'm vulnerable. Crawford's ready. He already knows an opponent's patterns. Right? So Crawford in fights is highly tailored to his opponent. Crawford fights are different every fight because he's fighting a different opponent. So you'll notice Crawford knows that Ricky Burns is going to go over to the ropes. Crawford knows Burns' body is going to be open when Burns is over by the ropes. Right? Crawford, what I found with technicians is even if they had an A punch or an A plus punch, right? All of these technicians are two handed and they don't rely on the A plus punch. It might shock some people here, but I believe that Crawford, the junior welter, coming up to welterweight to fight the welterweight champ, is actually the puncher in this fight. I don't think Crawford plans to be on his back foot. I think he realizes that Jeff Horn has holes in his game. Jeff Horn's right hand is the best punch in this fight. Right? Let's say we give that right hand a B plus. Just understand that Crawford has a lot of B punches. Crawford can knock you out with the multiplicity of punches, right? People here online are talking about the crawford Yorkies gamboa fight. As I recall it, Gamboa hit the deck in that fight, didn't he? Has Gamboa looked worse against an opponent, right? So, what I'm expecting here, because Jeff Horn's been down in fights, I'm expecting Crawford to completely neutralize Jeff Horn's right hand. I'm expecting Crawford to invite Jeff Horn's chaos. While I feel, based on styles, that Manny Pacquiao would have a chance on Crawford. Understand Crawford is the much more complicated fighter. Right? Crawford's two-handed. He's going to have Jeff Horn, in my opinion, walking into left hooks, walking into straight right hands. Now, the casino has thrown down the gauntlet on this fight. I don't believe that this is a fight that you want to bet a lot of money on. Any bet on this fight should be for entertainment purposes. They have Jeff Horn as a 6-1 to one underdog. In other words, even though I feel Terrence Crawford wins the fight, they have taken a lot of the return out of betting on Terrence Crawford. So you're going to have to take risks, and I mean big risks, on this fight. 
because I believe Jeff Horn is a fastball pitcher who doesn't make adjustments, whose defense drops based on different situations. I believe Terrence Crawford in his first fight at welterweight is going to go for the knockout. Right? The bet I'm recommending here is to take a swing for the fences. Take Jeff Horn at 6-1 to one to win the fight. Hedged with Crawford at 1-2 to two to win by knockout. Right? You can make the fight work by betting more on the Crawford side of the aisle. So if either happens, Jeff Horn wins. By the way, if it goes the distance, I don't see Jeff Horn winning. But if the casino is paying me 6-1 to one and I get a decision, why not? Didn't Jeff Horn beat Manny Pacquiao by decision? Right? Jeff Horn at 6-1, to one, you want to swing at that. You can put more money on Crawford to win by stoppage, right? Keep in mind, even the Victor Postal fight, Crawford does drop Victor Postal. I believe Crawford wants to make a statement, understand too, Crawford was always big for 140 pounds. But I want people to understand the risk involved, and it's substantial. If Crawford plays it safe, if Crawford is winning the fight and says to himself, great, I'm about to pick up a share of the welterweight title. All I have to do is to continue to stay away from Jeff Horn's right cross. Right? If Crawford takes that approach and wins by decision, you lose it all. Right? I personally believe that Terrence Crawford and gamblers have to make these decisions without facts. I'll be the first to say it. I don't know Terrence Crawford. But I firmly believe that Terrence Crawford is a bad ass. What that means is when Crawford is in the ring against a guy who wins by KO. Right? Think and Dongo. I believe Terrence Crawford sits down on his punches when his opponent is not defensively blessed, right? I believe Crawford is one of the most skilled guys in the entire sport. Crawford, like Bellew, creates situations, right? You'll notice Crawford is hanging around just for the window to open so he has a window of opportunity and he's a student of the game so he knows when that window is gonna open so my point to you is simply look Jeff Horn's been caught in fights he's been dropped in fights he's been hit hard in fights it was Jeff Horn who the referee in the Manny Pacquiao fight told look you gotta show me something or I'm gonna stop the fight Jeff Horn ends up in shootouts. Well, here he's against a guy who's going to give the illusion of wanting to be in the shootout with him. But as Jeff Horn lumbers over there trying to wrestle with him so he could get off a right cross, right? I believe Terrence Crawford is just going to wait for the window to open, just like Tony Bellew. And Crawford's going to be ready. Understand, Crawford, like Tyson Fury, like Danny Jacobs, is ambidextrous. Understand, Crawford, contrary to public opinion, is actually a knockout puncher. I think Crawford closes the show. I think Crawford enters the welterweight division with a stoppage of one of its champions. I believe you don't get to Crawford's level in terms of, just like Tyson Fury, you don't get to be Tyson Fury unless you have studied the game, lived in the world of pattern recognition, reached the conclusion that you're not there 
to get fastballs over the plate. You're actually there to know your opponent. Figure out his hot zones. Prevent those from happening. Figure out his weak zones. And make the entire fight about that. The bet I'm recommending is Jeff Horn to win because the casino is giving me 6-1. to one, Hedged with Crawford at 1-2 to two by stoppage. I'm going to put more money on Crawford than I am Jeff Horn. So if either happens, I get a profit. Just understand, though, that this isn't a big bet play because there is a distinct possibility that the fight goes the distance. And if it does, and Terrence Crawford wins, you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Let me add this on David Hay. Right, let's talk talent for a moment. Right, understand David Hay, and I still believe this, hits harder than most, certainly than Tony Bellew. Right, hits harder. Has the faster hands. Is the more gifted fighter when he's on his A game. So there's been a lot of talk about David Hay retiring and stuff like that. And I love to see fighters retire in their prime uh, with money in the bag, right? I hope Carl Froch stays retired. But that said, as I've said in other videos, the heavyweight division is in flux, right? You don't have a Lennox Lewis guy running the division right now. You just don't. You don't have a prime Vladimir Klitschko right now running the division. You don't have the guy who you look at and you understand, damn, this guy has a great jab. Damn, this guy knows how to box. Damn, this guy's a technician who can create situations. Right? You don't have that right now at heavyweight. So if I'm David Hay, I might not retire. Understand, heavyweights age more slowly than everyone else. Somebody needs to apply Einstein's theory of relativity to the aging process of boxers. Right? David Hayes still has the power. He still has the hand speed. What he needs to do is to be honest with himself about how bad his Achilles is about whether he's able to get back up on his toes as he was when he went the distance without getting dropped with a more prime Vladimir Klitschko. Right? So if I'm David Hay, okay, I lost twice to Tony. It's Tony's moment. Understood. Right? If I'm David, I leave the money on the table right now because I'm sure Tom, Dick, and Harry want David Hay's scalp on their resume I leave the money on the table right now, and I work out my legs. I, I figure out just how bad this Achilles is. If it doesn't get better than it is right now, if it's the kind of thing that continues to prevent him from getting up on his toes, prevent him from being defensive as he's backing up, prevents him from being unpredictable in his movement, if this Achilles continues to be a problem, all right, Father Tom eventually beats all of us. At that point, you say, okay, I'm out of the game. But if he rests the Achilles, right, if he then is able to get in the gym and get back to who he was, all I'm saying to you is, folks, we have to expect there to be flux at heavyweight. Right? I know Wilder and Joshua have tremendous records, tremendous knockout percentages, right? Only one man has gone the distance with both of them. On paper, they're hard to argue against. I'm on the other side of the street. I see the, both guys as green. I think these older heavyweights with punches who only have to be right once in a fight, Right? Need to think about 
their chances of winning the title if they continue. No matter how bad the guy looked in a recent fight, right, because of an ongoing lingering injury, right? Understand, in the NBA, they know. You tear an Achilles, you're pretty much done for 18 months, right? David Hay tears his Achilles, is back in the ring a year later, and can't move backwards, right? Food for thought. Anyway, you know where I stand on the Crawford fight. I'm expecting Crawford to win, right? But if he doesn't, I'll be the casino suckleberry. I'll take the 6-1 to one on Jeff Horn. If he does win, in my opinion, there's a good shot that he wins by KO, right? Don't believe the hype on Crawford being 140 and docile. Quite the opposite. Look at the Indongo fight. This guy was oversized at 140. Guess what, folks? He carries a punch. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. And why are we be cre being creative here? Taking Crawford by KO? It's because if we're uncreative, then you're laying something like 10 to 1 odds. Far too expensive. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.